The Ukraine's deputy prime minister says nine evacuation corridors have today been agreed for people trapped in besieged cities across Ukraine to escape the fighting. Writing on Telegram, Irina Vereschuk says humanitarian corridors will operate from Berdyansk, Tokmak, Enerhoda and Mariupol. She says evacuation routes out of the eastern Luhansk region will only work if occupying Russian forces stop their shelling. Well, our ICE correspondent Philip Crowther is in the western Ukraine city of Lviv and he joins us now with the very latest on those stories. Uh, good to talk with you. Philip, so Russia says the flagship of its Black Sea fleet has been badly damaged by an explosion on board, but Ukraine says it hit the warship with missiles. So two competing narratives there. What more do we know at this stage? Yeah, difficult really to get any kind of uh, independent verification on something like this, isn't it? Uh, usually what we would do is maybe look at satellite imagery, for example. That's something that we tend to do when we can't get to somewhere like Mariupol to see from above what exactly has been happening on the ground. But we've been told that there was a lot of cloud cover there today and maybe tomorrow we'll find out whether there is some satellite imagery that we can actually use. Uh, now, where else could you get confirmation? Well, maybe from the Pentagon, a senior defense official uh, saying that uh, the Pentagon does not know or cannot say what exactly caused this fire. And that brings us back to the two points of view we have, the two stories on this, essentially, one from the Ukrainian side, one from the Russian side. If you put the two together, find a common denominator, that is this one, that that ship was seriously damaged. The Russian military admits that. Now, the Ukrainian military says that it sunk. At least one official went on record to say that from the Ukrainian government. Uh, it also says uh, that it was missiles that hit it. From the Russian point of view, you've got something different, that there was a fire on board. Of course, a fire can come from a missile hitting a ship, so don't discard that just yet. And then when it comes to how many people were evacuated and how, well, there's a lack of clarity on that too. Any which way, we know that it was seriously damaged and we know that that is a military and a symbolic victory for the Ukrainian armed forces. Uh, military because it takes away some of that Russian firepower in the Black Sea. On the symbolic front, well, this is a ship, as you mentioned, that memorably was involved the very first day of Russia's invasion of Ukraine. And now, on day 50, it looks like it is not operational anymore. I can tell you that the Ukrainian people right here in Ukraine are very happy about this. This is something worth celebrating. This is a famous warship because of how uh, it was essentially opposed uh, by those uh, uh, Board, uh, by those the guards who are on Snake Island that you just mentioned. Uh, so this is seen very much as a military and a symbolic defeat for the Russian military. And uh, some military analysts have described it as a rather old ship and not top of the range for Russia. But as you correctly pointed out there, whatever the case, it's a military and a symbolic victory for the Ukrainians. Well, let's turn to the latest from the port city of Mariupol, Philip. Uh, again, competing narratives there from the Russians and the Ukrainians. Yeah, and you'll hear me say the same thing. Uh, we want independent verification and simply don't have it right now. The claim from the Russian side is that even more, another hundred or more uh, Ukrainian soldiers surrendered. We can't verify that. That's uh, on top of the over a thousand uh, that the Ukrainian military says surrendered. We are seeing some social media footage and some Russian state TV footage that does seem to indicate uh, that at least some uh, Russian soldiers, that some Ukrainian soldiers, I, I should say, have surrendered over the last few days. That does not mean that the city of Mariupol is entirely under Russia's control. This is still a city that is being fought over. The Russian control is increasing and has been increasing over the last few weeks. It is a besieged city and has been since almost the very first day of this war, and it's been 50 days now. Uh, but there is still a pocket of Ukrainian armed forces and of Ukrainian resistance to Russia taking over the city that is still active right now. Now, you mentioned earlier those humanitarian corridors, one of which goes out of Mariupol and actually did work out today. Now remember these uh, 
these evacuation corridors, they always have to be agreed upon by both warring factions, by Ukraine and by Russia. And they were again today. There were a few hundred people who were able to get out of Mariupol by car. Other humanitarian corridors, by the way, also worked out today from cities in the eastern Donbass region, for example, bringing people to a relative uh, to relative safety a bit further towards central Ukraine and maybe eventually here to western Ukraine. But not all of those humanitarian corridors uh, actually worked out, according to the Ukrainian Deputy Prime Minister, who gave us her update uh, just a, a few minutes ago, in fact. Meanwhile, uh, Philip, the build-up in the east continuing, more Russian hardware and troops said to be moving into place towards the Donbass region. Yeah, absolutely. Toward the Donbass region from Russian territory, but also within the Donbass region, because remember that Russian forces are already there and indeed moved into that area uh, at the very start of this invasion when Russia was trying to essentially win this war on so many different in so many different areas of Ukraine, taking over the capital city Kiev, as we all know, did not work out. But in the east, there was also Russian troop movement. And indeed, Russian forces do occupy relatively large parts of the Donbass region in the north, definitely in the east and in the south, south coming from the areas more or less around Mariupol in the east toward the cities of Luhansk and Donetsk. And in the north coming down from the area around the city of uh, Kharkiv toward the city of Izum. Now you can imagine this basically as troops coming from three sides and there being a relatively big Ukrainian troop presence in the middle of that uh, and there are a lot of them uh, but a lot of military hardware is moving in that direction from the Russian side. By the way all experts do agree that this is a build-up right now that the Russian offensive despite the fact that there are increased missile strikes that we're seeing a bit of movement uh, here and there this is still absolutely not the big offensive uh, that has been planned and that is expected uh, to start sometime in the near future. Philip, many thanks for your reporting there. Philip Crowther, a rice correspondent, talking to me there from the Ukrainian city of...